This card was created with a simple accordion fold to develop a holding spot for a note, a little piece of artwork, something on the inside. I chose to create a wax resist on a sulfite paper. And I'll show you how I did that. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Hope you'll take a moment, subscribe to my channel. I like to experiment. I'm learning in this mixed media world and I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join me along my journey. Let's get started on this simple, easy card. This is some Kozo fiber paper that I chose to just cut into five inch by five inch squares. And I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of that. And I also have this sulfite paper that I normally use to line the inside of my journals. And I'm also going to cut some five inch by five inch squares out of that sulfite paper, which is what I wind up using for this particular card. That is, this comes on a big roll. I'll link both of these papers in the bottom, but I also think that you could utilize watercolor paper, any type of paper that will hold some wax would be fine. So let's take this over to my encaustic station and I am using my encaustic medium, which is that beeswax mixed with a little bit of Damar resin. And it comes like this in this big bag. I use a griddle, just a skillet, oh, to melt my wax. And I'm putting just a few beads of that right there and melting it right on the griddle. And I am going to dip my lid and my old, um, <laughs> this is a roll of masking tape that I had been using that I used all of it and I'm utilizing the end of that roll. Just dipping it in the wax on the griddle and marking these little five, by in, five inch by five inch pieces of paper. Now, be very careful when you're using a lid because it gets your fingers close to the griddle or close to the heat source. I did develop some additional shapes out of cardboard that were a little higher in, in uh, height to you know, kind of keep my finger from being so close. <laughs> from being so close to that griddle. But I, I made it through without burning myself, which was very fortunate. So this is just a um, little, I don't know what they call them, but you can get them at the Dollar Tree and they come for to put on the bottom of stool legs and things like that to keep them from scruffing the floor. That's what I use to create just the little dots. This is what I was telling you about before that I created out of cardboard, and I wanted to show you those. I just took some cardboard and folded it into squares and triangles and utilized that to create some wax resist areas on this paper. This is all we're trying to do at this particular point, is just creating that area for the resist. And I think we've We've completed this, this portion, so let's take that off of the little piece of plywood that I have positioned it on. And we'll take it back to my work table and get out some watercolor and just drop that color onto this piece. And I'm choosing different colors of blue. I'm going to do some in some buffs and, and burnt umbers. And just experiment, I created quite a few of these five inch by five inch pieces, so I'm just gonna play with, with dropping color in. And what you're seeing is wherever that wax is, of course, it is resisting the watercolor. So there, we have that dropped in. 
Let's do it one more time with just a couple of different colors and I'm using the buff here. I'm going to change this water out. I don't want to transfer that blue, so let me grab another little vessel and put some fresh water in it real fast. And we'll go with the burnt umber. Or I'm sorry, raw, I think it's raw umber. And we'll just lay those two colors in. And I, I really like the way this one looks. So now we want to remove the wax. I have a piece of parchment paper that I folded in half. I'm sticking the 5 inch by 5 inch watercolored piece with the wax resist on it in between the parchment papers and hitting that with a dry hot iron. That pulls the wax right out of there. So it melts the wax and you can just essentially pull it off with the parchment paper. And I will continue to do that until I feel that I have removed all the wax from each piece. And the parchment paper, of course, keeps it, keeps it from just melting and, and uh, adhering another piece of paper to it. So make sure you use that coated parchment paper. So now we have several that we have completed. The wax has been removed. And I just think these make a, you know, simple but nice little insert for a card. Or, you know, it would also be nice to stick down inside an art journal, a junk journal, you know, cut it into a tag shape, use it to, as a starting point or a focal point in your art journal. So I really, I really like that process, if you will. So now that we have these completed, and I, I think we've gone over them enough now, let's get started with putting some color down on a piece of cardstock to create that card. So the first color that I am laying down is a Payne's gray or a dark, a dark gray. And I am choosing to use one of the circular pieces, so I want to stick with the circles, kind of have that continuity from the cover to the inside piece of artwork that we're going to put inside there. So I have that dark gray start, and I just lay the Payne's Gray ink down in my gel, gel press, and use the lid to create the circles. Now that I have that kind of complete, I also added some parchment to that as well. And I'm going to come back with that cerulean blue and just add some marks. And I think I lost the footage with the parchment, but after I finished with the gray, I just took a coat of parchment colored paint and had a stencil, and you can see the stencil up in the upper right corner that I created the pattern with and laid that down on top of that gray. So that's, that's where that total color came from on that sheet, and I'm sorry that I deleted that. And unfortunately, I've deleted it from, from everywhere, so I can't go back and retrieve it. But once I have that cerulean blue laid down, to just define it a little bit more, I added some black with the circles the same, same way I added the cerulean blue. And now we are ready to put our five by five I'm putting it on a five and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. 
and that is going to be ready to go in the center. And I'm going to get a couple of them ready in a couple of different colors because I'm not confident I'm going to use the blue on the inside of this. I might choose, and I, as you saw in the opening pictures, I did choose to use the more colorful so that it was a pop of different color on the inside. So let's get started with creating this. I want to score it right in the center. So I'm going to line this up, measure, and get a score line right in the center of this page. Then one inch to the left, two inches to the left of the center, one inch to the right, two inches to the right. That's it. That's all the scoring that you're going to have. So you're putting a center mark, one inch, to the left, two inches to the left, one inch to the right, two inches to the right. Now we're going to just create the peaks of an accordion fold on each side. So now you have your little M that you have created and your piece will fit right in that M. So I'm gonna fold over the top corner on each of these peaks and just fold them in to line up the bottom of the fold to the valley. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Now we're going to pull those apart and just reverse those folds. Okay, now we're going to flip that over. That's what it looks on the other side. Just making sure those folds are secure. And now we'll take it from the middle, pull it out, go with the bone folder, and fold the top center down or up, depending on which side of the card you're, you're working on. And that creates this little holding mechanism for this card. So we want to utilize that bone folder to really secure those folds. I'm going to shut it and secure it again. And now when I open it up, I have my little holder created for my little watercolor wax resist piece. And I think that makes a, a nice little card. You, you know, you could do, do this a number of ways. You, you know, I'm, this is what I did. But you can utilize this fold or this card creation to put anything on this 5 inch by 5 inch piece. It can just be a, a note that you write. But I think that makes a nice, a nice card. It also makes a nice piece to fit down inside a pocket in a journal. Nice little surprise. Now let's dress up this piece just a little bit more. And I'm going to go around the outside edge of it with some embossing. And I wind up not using this particular piece, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you what, what I did with it, just, just for giggles, I guess, or just to, to keep it in. And, and I'll tell you why I chose not to use it when we get to that point, but this is kind of the process I went through. So I felt, why not keep it in here? So I embossed the outside edge of that with some embossing powder. I like the way it looks, and I thought the embossing powder, and it's just a black sparkle powder that I've utilized, I thought the embossing powder would also be nice to bring that into the cover as well. So I just drew some circles with my 
embossing pen and sprinkled that powder on him, hit him with that heat tool, and now I have in all the places I'm printing out that is embossed areas on the outside of this card. I'm going to finish it off by rounding the corners of each edge. And I have decided to get this pop of color ready. I just felt like that was so bland to have the blue open it up and have more blue. So I thought, why not bring in this yellow, orange, pinkish piece and make that be the visual when you open up this card. So I have that ready to go. I'm going to put it on the black cardstock. Now I'm just using my Baron to make sure that it is adhered and glued down. And you can see the black through that, uh, where the wax was on the back of that card. And I want to add some black on top of it with some of that embossing powder. So I've drawn my circles utilizing the masking tape. I don't know if you can hear the cartoons playing in the background, but this is the six weeks that I am watching my daughter's children. So we are going to be creating some videos this afternoon on things to do with five-year-olds and three-year-olds. But I wanted to get this voiceover complete and get this posted today. So there, that I think fits in there really nice. I like the contrast in color when you open the card. So to score that, because it's going to be folded in half, I thought I'd go ahead and put a score mark in it to make that fold a little easier. There we go. So now let's tuck that down inside. And there is the completed card. However, I do see some play areas that that embossing could it could use a little more. So I'm just going to add to that a bit before we call it complete. And now I think we have a nice card. But I'm not overly happy with the way that it stays closed. So I want to add a paper clip attachment to keep that card closed. So I have these black paper clips and I'm going to pull out some of the catch papers or the papers that I didn't use that I created for this project and measure that paper clip up and just cut myself a thin little strip of this one that I've chosen and we'll wrap that around the paper clip and just create a little dress if you will for this for this clip. And I'm just eyeing how long I went to make it, just kind of eyeballing what will be an appropriate wrap over. And now that I have that, pulling out some glue, I'm just going to glue that into place, stick it back on that paper clip. 
And there, we're good to go. But it's missing one thing. It's missing the circles. There are no real circles being defined on that paper clip. And that was kind of the whole point of this, this whole cord, was to keep the continuity with the circular pattern. So let me grab something to add a little charm to this first. And then we're going to go back and draw some little circles on that with just a white gel press pen. So I have a charm. I want it to dangle a little bit. So I pulled out some little jump rings. And I am just adding about three or four of those together. And then I will add the charm that I pulled out of stock onto that. And then we'll stick that onto that paper clip. And that will dangle on the front of this card, which I think will be nice. So there it is, dangling on the front of the card. But as I said before, I think we need to complete that circular pattern. I'm pulling out a white gel pen, pen and a circular template and just adding some additional circles or adding some circles onto that paper clip or onto the paper dress that we have on the paper clip. So that is the completion of that project. So it's a simple fold, simple little insert with the wax resist for the watercolor. I hope you like it. I hope you found it as enjoyable as I did. I don't know what your choice would have been, but I like the pop of color on the inside and I like the additional little closure with the paper clip. So thank you very much for joining me on this project. I hope you will come back and walk with me along my journey in learning this mixed media. And of course, over the next six weeks, I'm going to be doing some things with my five-year-old and three-year-old granddaughter. And I hope you will come enjoy with me as I dive into projects that are appropriate to do with young children. Thanks so much for being here. Please hit that subscribe button. The thumbs up really help promote my channel on YouTube and your comments are always appreciated.